Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial I'm going to make the opponent bat here move automatically to try to intercept the ball although at the moment the ball's still not bouncing off the bat so we'll have to fix that shortly and I actually I was thinking that we were going to have separate classes for the two different kinds of bat, the opponent and the player but I've realized that we can actually get by just fine with just having one bat class because the uh, game only sends touch events to the player bat I don't know why there's suddenly an error in here because this is working well anyway um, we only send touch events to the player bat and we, we're only going to update the position of the opponent bat so when we call um, in here we're going to call player.update but we're not going to call uh, sorry we're going to call opponent.update but we're not going to call player.update and I don't, I don't know what's, what's going on here so let's just take a look at this error so it says that set position float is undefined for the type bat and yet I just showed you code that was working and I haven't changed it since then um, maybe I'm looking at a game I think I was looking at a game file from a different project my apologies okay so let's carry on so what I need to do is I need to add an update method to this bat which I then call in the game class let's go to game here and that's, it will help if we go to game in the right project so this is the game it's my game class and I'm updating the ball and let's now call opponent dot update opponent dot update and pass the elapsed time to that and uh, I'll save that and then click on this error and go to create method update and type bat so I only call opponent dot update I don't call player dot update because the, the player the actual human player will control the position of the player bat so here's my newly created method and now what I can do in there is just put some intelligence that controls the position of the bat and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to in this bat class I keep thinking of Batman for some reason <laughs> I'm going to give it a private random random equals new random so we need a random number generator and I think I'm not using this I'm not using a random number generator yet anywhere in here so let's add the input control shift O and in update um, what I'm going to do is and this is a really simple algorithm that I figured out very quickly so I'm sure you could think of one that's much better but I'm just gonna firstly get a random number from the random number generator I'm gonna say I'll call it I'll call it decision and I'll say int decision equals random dot next int 20 so that's going to give me a random number with 20 different possibilities so it's going to be from 0 up to and including 19 but it will never actually be 20 and then I'm going to say if decision is equal to 0 and if the decisions equal to 0 well what I'll do is I'll also give this a a direction so I'll say private private duh and uh, private int duh direction and I'll just save that and in init here I'm going to initialize duh to either minus one or plus one or am I? yeah let's do that so I'll say duh equals random dot next int and we'll use the same technique as before I'll say random net not random dot next in two so that gives us a random number that's either zero or one and I multiply that by two and it's now it's either zero or two and I subtract one and now it's either minus one or plus one so the the direction is initialized randomly to minus one or plus one and this is going to be the direction in the y direction so it's it's going to mean either up or down and when I update the position of the bat what I'll do is I'll say int y actually float y I think equals get y and later on I'll say set y y and meanwhile we'll do something to y and what we'll do is we'll have a speed as well as a direction so let's go to the top here 
in the back class and I'll say private float speed equals and I'll try 4.0f and we'll see how that goes so a value of 4 in floating point and in between getting the y and setting the y I'll say that y plus equals direction times speed times elapsed see see how this looks so the speed's going to stay the same in this algorithm and elapse is the elapsed time and I'm going to intelligently change the direction to make it look as though the bat is trying to is being controlled by some entity that's attempting to hit the ball and so I get my random decision from 0 to, 9, 0 to 19 inclusive and I say if decision is equal to 0 I'll set a direction equal to 0 so that means the bat will not move because this will this will be the stuff we add to y will be zero and I'll say else if decision equals one so um, the idea in, in, in saying if decision equals naught is that this will happen one out of every 20 times and then another one out of every 20 times will say if de okay if decision is e equal to one this will happen one out of every 20 times then we'll pick a random direction so let's just copy this up here paste it in here so I'll say that the direction is randomly either minus one or plus one I, I suppose I could condense that into one line actually but that will do just fine and uh, else if decision is less than four so now this is going to be happening one out of every 10 times I think because um, we've already handled 0 and 1 but there's still 2 and 3 they're both less than 4 um, so that's 2 times out of every 20 which is 1 out of every 10 now in that case I'm going to move it towards the ball and to do that we're going to have to know where the ball is so I'm going to go back to my game here and when I call opponent.update I'm going to pass it the ball so that the bat has a reference to the ball and let's add this here to the argument list and I'm going to say if ball.get now I need to say ball.get screen rect which if we just take a look at that method which we implemented that gets the rectangle that represents the bounding rectangle of the ball actually on the screen so if ball dot get screen rec dot center y, so the vertical center of the ball, if that's less than get screen rec, in other words, this dot get screen rec dot center y. So if the vertical position, the vertical center of the ball is less than the vertical center of the bat then let's make the direction minus one so the ball is the, the center of the ball is less than the center of the bat so we want to make the direction negative so that we then decrease the y position of the bat else um, else we're going to assume that the bats that the center position of the ball is going to be greater than that of the bat or else it's directly on top of it in which case we'll make the direction of the bat positive so that it moves while it will be downwards which will be towards the ball hopefully and let's run that and we'll see if it works I may have missed out some crucial thing I don't know and I, I kind of derived this algorithm just from fiddling about with it and it's it's very simple and you could do something much nicer and that's actually true for this game in general I've, I've really um, I've not made it anywhere near as nice as it could be because I just wanted to provide you with a demo but you could do stuff for example like instead of the ball bouncing by just changing direction there we go something's happening um, we could make it that the ball is, is always accelerating and when it hits something it could sharply decelerate and change direction and that would make the ball look really look like it's bouncing which would look a lot more elegant and more interesting rather than just keeping it at a constant speed anyway you can see that it's working but the, the problem is that it tends to disappear off the screen so I'm going to put an extra check in here and I'm going to say down here if 
let's say if um, the top edge of the bat is off the screen. So if get screen wrecked, get screen wrecked dot top is less than zero, that means that the top edge of the bat is off the top of the screen and I want to make dir equal to one to start increasing the y position of the bat and moving it down the screen. Else if get screen wrecked dot bottom is greater than, in fact let's just make that less than or equal to, although that, that is being a bit picky. If it's if the bottom of it is greater than or equal to the get get screen height, or I think we want to say, then it's um, it's going off the bottom edge. So I want to say dirt equals negative one. So regardless of what decision is made up here, if I want to then override that, if I see that the bat is Oops, I seem to be launching two of them at the same time. If I see that the bat is going off the screen, I want to override that with um, with a more sensible decision that will tend to bring it back into the middle of the screen again. So this is hopefully about to run. And in fact, it does run, but the, you can't probably see it on the emulator, but the bat's actually jumping up and down like a thing possessed at an incredible rate. So I'm just going to tweak this a bit and pause recording of this video and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. And what I did was I changed the speed of the bat to 0.4F and now it looks pretty good. And you can't really see it on this screencast. In fact, the screencast seems to have frozen. But yeah, it's, it's coming through bit by bit. But uh, if I look at my phone, um, I'm sorry that you can't see this, but it, it does actually look quite reasonable. The bat looks a bit like it's controlled by someone who's um, on sort of methamphetamine or something. It's a bit hyperactive, but it, uh, it is nevertheless, it's doing the trick and it's a lot of the time it will intercept the ball and sometimes it misses it, which is exactly what you want to give the player here a fighting chance. So that's it for this tutorial, and in the next tutorial we're going to make the ball actually bounce off the bats. So join me again then, and until next time, happy coding.